Welcome to the channel, it's Go Greddy, and welcome to Super Formula at Fuji, where I gotta call some shenanigans. Man, this race was tough. This is the hardest level, the, uh, I don't know how many chili peppers it is, whatever it is, it's the hard level, and I was struggling to win this race, but I finally figured out the winning strategy and the winning tune, so stick around, check it out. All right, so the race we are talking about is in the uh, Oceanic slash Asia region right over here. We're going to go in there, and then we are going to go over here to Fuji International Speedway over to Super Formula, and this is the race I'm talking about, 15 laps. We got 3X fuel, 12X tires. Fuel's not a problem, folks, but them tires are a nightmare. So what you got to do to win this race is first do this. Go get this car. And if you already have it in your garage, it's in the super formula section of your garage down there near the bottom. There it is. We want the SF23, not the SF19, not the 19 version. We want the 23 version. So that's the car you grab. If you don't have it in your garage, you need to go get it from Brand Central. Go to your Asia Oceana region, or sorry, Asia Pacific region. Go to super formula. Click on there, slide it on over to the SF23, get the Honda or the Toyota, it does not matter. I grabbed the Honda because VTEC, baby! Yes, we're gonna send it in the SF23. Now let's go tune this thing. All right, I know it doesn't really have VTEC, but regardless, we're gonna go over here into the racing section. We're gonna go down, we're gonna find the fully customizable racing transmission, and we are gonna grab that bad boy and we're gonna slap it into our SF23. So do that, that's all you need to buy. Except, of course, for the tires, you're going to need racing soft tires. Don't forget the racing soft tires. You're going to need racing soft tires and maybe some intermediates. Go ahead and get some intermediates, too, because it might rain. I, I didn't experience rain, but I heard you might rain. All right, so we put on our soft tires here in the tuning menu, and we're going to now go down to our anti-roll bar. We're going to slam 7 and 7 on there, and we're going to increase our dampening ratio to 35 front and rear. We're going to leave the expansion alone. We're going to leave it as is. And then we're going to drop the natural frequency on the back side of the car all the way down to four and a half. We're going to pull a little camber out of the front angle, uh, front end and add a little camber to the rear end. So 2.7 and 2.7. Then we're going to take some of that front toe out. We're going to bring it into 0 0.05 on the front. Then we're going to drop the initial torque down to five and the braking sensitivity we're going to drop that down to five we're going to leave the acceleration sensitivity at 20. then we're going to go up here to the downforce section and we are going to increase the front downforce to 1265 going to give us a little more front end bite next we're going to go down to the transmission now remember we got that fully customizable racing transmission we're going to put that at 350 then we're going to go in and we're going to adjust the final gear to 2.960 i'm going to go through it all so you can see it happens so you can do exactly what i did after you do that you're going to go to first gear you're going to put that at 2.412 then go to second gear and put it at 1.843 and then third gear will be 1.562 fourth gear will be 1.348 Fifth gear will be 1.237, and sixth gear will be 1.165. When you get done, your miles per hour should line up with mine. First gear should be 150, as you see right there. I'm going to fast forward a little bit, and uh, you just need to copy or pause and, and do whatever you need to do to match up your gears with mine, and this will have you set up to be able to use your final two gears to their peak max performance during this race. It also gives you a pretty nice first gear for coming out of these low-speed corners in that back half technical se technical section of the course. So I think you'll like that as well. So that is what it's going to look like when you're done. But you are not quite done yet. We're going to take the anti-lag system. We're going to drop that to strong. So we're going to get those nice crisp shifts. And that is it for tuning. You are ready to send it. Let's get it on track. All right, so when you get to the track, don't forget to do this. I almost forgot to do it. Go to your controllers, go to your wheel or your controller, and you got to map uh, a nitrous overtake button. Because if you don't do that, you won't be able to use the NOS, and you really need it during this race. So do that, then start the race. Now, if you start the race and you see Mikhail Hazel, as you see in third place here, if you see M. Hazel in the top three, restart the race. Don't even bother. You, like, if you win the race, it's because... You are a top split A plus driver. You are absolutely flying because he does a no stop on hards and you can barely catch him. And I'm doing a soft, soft. So what you'll see here is I'm going to go into pits here on lap number eight. That's the plan. I'm only 5.9 seconds off his ale. I put on my softs. I don't grab fuel. I come, uh, I come into the pits here. Hey, look at that beautiful Miami version of the Oracle Red Bull racing car. 
I chose that because I needed I needed to come back from far in the pack, and I thought maybe this was would inspire me. It did not inspire me on this race. This was my first try with this tune. Um, I had the best finish I had before was also a second place. So this is about to be another second place race again. That's because Mikhail Hazel is up there in first. If you see M Hazel, just back out and start over. Don't even bother. Here I am, lap 15. I get within four seconds of him. But look at my finishing time here. This is why you don't do it with Mikhail in P1. I finished this race with a 2101. That's pretty. That's pretty good. That's moving pretty well. Mikel had a 2057 with the no stop on hards. That's insane, insane. So, don't do it. If you see Mikel in the top three, just start over. All right, fear not. It gets way easier than having to try and beat Mikel. On this race, you can see no M Hazel in the top three. <laughs> That's what you want. Now I put brake balance, I believe, three to the front there. I'm able to make the pass on P19 right there at corner one. Try and make that pass there. That's going to put you into the slipstream of P18 here. And as long as you are in the slipstream, you don't really need to use the overtake. With this gearing, it really catches up to the cars in front of you very quick. As you can see, I just went down the inside. Take the inside whenever you can on that right-hand sweeper down into first gear here like i said that first gear very useful on the track because of the new gearing in the tune i'm in bove's slipstream so no real need to use again the overtake if you're in their slipstream use their slipstream i was out breaking everyone here by breaking at that driveway on the right hand side i just took two cars right there i'm up to p15 already on lap one now you're going to drop it here into first gear at the beginning of the green let it roll through here get back on the throttle when you feel the front end is pointed straight you can smash it, but if you smash it too early, that rear end is going to come out. So don't hit the throttle too early, too hard. Be patient. Let the front end get around and point in the direction you want it to go before you mash that, that gas pedal. Now on the straight, I like to use the overtake to make sure I'm within a few tenths of whoever's in front of me. Then I can overtake them with my speed and get right by them. I see I'm in sixth gear, easily pulling away from them. I hit a little extra overtake to make sure he doesn't try anything foolish going into corner one i like overtake on the straights breaking there at the beginning of the curbing again down into first gear break right at the beginning of that curbing every time and you will make corner one not a problem if you're overtaking someone smash that brake pedal and you will get by now i went down the inside again always use that inside on the ai here the ai drive pretty elbows out and if you go around the outside they will take you out they will knock you off the course so i was not kind to them if I went for a move on and I felt like they were going to threaten me in the corner, I just drove them off the track. I'm not going for a clean race bonus here. I was going for the win. So I drove a little bit dirty against the AI, but hey, it worked out for me. Um, so I, I, when I come out of this corner here, I'm going to drive it right to the apex and make sure he doesn't try and come back around me. So if you were to try and go side by side with me, he would have ended up in the grass. Again, take the inside line there up to P10 here on lap number two, adjusting the brake mounts to two to the front as it looked like the front tires were getting a little too much wear actually you can go with a one to the front or a zero to the front that's what i found out by the end of the race one or zero is fine to get good even tire balance with this tune um i, I like the heavy front end bias so i could really get some brake performance again hitting that in that that nos to get by this car on the straight usually you can use it just to make sure you're getting a decent run on them um, i didn't really probably have to use it there until i got by them uh, like I said, once you get in their slipstream with this tune, it's almost like you're pushing the NOS button. You are going to absolutely fly. So I like uh, what I found was the NOS is better saved for the top end of the car. And I was kind of trying out a few things here and there. Now, for the strategy, um, I'm on the racing soft tires. I'm going to go eight laps, pit, and then finish the final seven laps. Why am I going eight laps? I'm trying to trick the AI, force the AI to do something silly, or see if the weather's going to change. I want to stay out as long as I can. Because if the weather does change, I want to jump on the intermediate tires and, and, and not get caught with my pants down. Now, if I go in on lap seven, a lap early, and I put on my softs, I come back out, and all of a sudden here comes rain on lap eight or nine, I'm kind of screwed. So I like to go as long as I can in these races with the potential for rain just to see what the weather is going to do. You can go eight laps even if you have no tire wear left unless they make a change in the update. You can easily go eight laps on the soft tires so do that so we're into p6 here on lap number six i ran a 122 on lap number two a lot of that was due to slipstream and smashing that nos button so don't let that lap time intimidate you you, you can run that i was i wasn't running too hard here i'm not the greatest fuji driver ever and i'm pretty terrible in the high downforce cars 
uh, especially the, the super formula cars and, and, and the F1 cars for whatever reason I cannot drive those cars that way well now a lot of these cars you're gonna be able to pass here going into corner one because a lot of them clip the grass on the left and it really slows the AI down there's that slight kink in the road they hit the grass you can go right by them on the right hand side like I said Break at the beginning of that curbing that starts on your left hand side and you will always make corner one even in a strong slipstream. Do that, you'll be fine. Here I break right at the little red dot on the right hand side or a little bit afterwards and try and let it roll through this corner, carry that speed through the corner and then crank it up through the gears. Here again going down the inside of the AI as we head towards the hairpin and the hard braking zone. There's the driveway on the right hand side, mashing the brake pedal. Clip in this corner. If you just try and clip that corner every single time, over and over again. You're going to get some good times through this section. If you turn in there at the beginning of the green, hit your apex here and throttle out of the corner, you're going to make good times through this technical section. I usually take that corner probably a little more narrow than I should. This last one I just went through could probably widen that out, get a better exit on that, but it's just it's probably a bad habit of mine. I should probably readdress how I take that final technical section, but. It's what I was doing. Now here I'm mashing the nose because I want to get within five temps and let that let that natural draft just pull me forward. As you can see I'm really accelerating. Look, I'm at 188, 189, 190, 91 miles an hour, no NOS, and I go zipping on by my brake there at the beginning of the curbing, and I make the corner. Now it was a little more tough to make that corner. I was really having to get on the brake pedal, but I made it. I'm in P2. I got C. Lopez in front of me. All I got to do is get by him, and I am now in first place. You know, when I get by Lopez, I'm in first place to go my eight laps pit, come back, and hopefully I won't have to fight back through nearly as much traffic or have to catch you know, someone who's going on a crazy one-stopper that I won't be able to catch. So let's fast forward a little bit and see when and where I'm able to take over Lopez for the lead of this race. Here we are on, on lap six, again, breaking there, getting the curbing, and easily get down on the inside of Lopez, power out of the corner. See you later, C. Lopez. Gretty's going on by. I won't even a Gretty pass. That was actual, real to life pass performed by yours truly. So now I am like the world champion against the AI. So yeah, you can all just suck it. Gretty just went on by. Just leaving y'all in the dust now. I'm on the right strat, and Mikhail Hazel is nowhere to be found. So pedal to the metal. And uh you know, just haul butt here on the lap eight. Don't make any foolish mistakes. You're going to be able to win this race. Once you get out front like this, all you got to do is make it to the pit stop. You can see I've dropped the brake balance there to zero. My tire wear a little uneven, uh, a little too much tire wear in front, not quite enough in the back, but that's okay. I have good grip coming out of the corners. Uh, you probably would be better served to be a little pushy. Uh, I'm a little understeer going through these corners rather than having no rear tires and blowing out the rear end and losing control in an oversteer situation. So not necessarily the worst thing in the world to have a little extra front tire wear than rear, than rear tire wear if you're not super uh, secure with you know, the, the, the power output of these cars uh, when you're coming out of these corners. So just keep that in mind. If you have trouble controlling the rear end of the car, you know, go a little biased towards the front and save the rear tires a little bit for you as the race goes on. Let's go to the pit stop and see how I come out after that. All right, so here's what I'm talking about. You look at my left front tire. It is absolute toast. It is just, it's just gone. I'm racing on a rim. I mean, I'm doing like, you know, bad boys, cops, you know, sparks flying everywhere. Not good. I'm on, I'm on three tires and, and the, <laughs> the left rear doesn't look too hot either. So uh, <laughs> we're going to try and pull a Lewis Hamilton here and go into the pits. Well, he went for the win on three tires. I'm only going into the pits on three tires. Not quite as impressed as it's quite as impressive as Sir Lewis Hamilton getting that win. Where was it? Was that? I can't remember which track that was at, but that, that was crazy. Anyway, into the pits, fly in there. I'm going to throw on the sauce, grab no fuel. It is not needed, and we are going to head out and see what we look like. All right, here we come back out on the track, and we are in P6, 12.3 seconds off the lead car, well, 12.5 as we come out of corner one. Get on the overtake a little bit there just to keep those back cars off my rear bumper, those back markers there. Don't want them fooling with me. We catch up later in the lap to Kawakami. What a great name, K. Kawakami. I mean, his mother must have loved him. That was a fantastic name. I just like that name. Anyway, so we got to get on to the overtake, get past Kawakami coming down the straight. It is neck and neck heading towards the start finish line, but old gold Greddy 
just got too much for the Kawakami SF23 or 19 or whatever the heck he's in. And we squeeze him off right there. We get into the slipstream of P4. Innistrosa, dump it down into first gear. Was hoping maybe get the inside pass there on Innistrosa, but he is a world champion driver, so unable to do that. But I am able to get the inside pass there in the long sweeping right hander here at Fuji. Dispatch of Innistrosa. Now it is time for Suzuki to feel the wrath of Go Gretty. We go right on by along the outside. Didn't listen to my own advice. We sent it down the outside of Suzuki. Now down the inside of Blazon as we head towards again the start finish line here on lap number 10. I give him a little snaky snake. Make sure he doesn't get Gretty slipstream. You should do that too during the race because they will come up on you in the slipstream. On to lap number 11 only 7.4 seconds off lopez and he gets scared he jumps in the pit he knew i was coming strong and i was coming fast he knew better than to challenge the gretty on some old worn medium tires so in the pits he goes does he come out in front of me heck no he is way in back yours truly now out into p1 by 4.2 seconds with four laps to go and on the final lap we're going to give you a lap guy. Break here at the start of the curbing. Get down into first or second gear, whichever you prefer. Kind of like first. Don't miss your apex by a mile like I just did right there. Apex was optional for me on that corner. Going to let go of the throttle there just before the little red dot on the right-hand side. And then get back on the throttle through there. You can hold it almost planted through here. If you're really brave, you can hold it planted. Get on the brakes again there at the red dot. Going to let it coast down through there. Carry the speed through the corner up to second, third. Carrying the speed, speed, let the car pull you out. Now into fourth and fifth gear. Going to break at the driveway. Breaking a straight line down into first gear. Turn it in. Clip the apex. Actually hit my apex for a change. Congratulations, Greddy. Now into second. Heading as straight as I can towards that curbing on the left side. Going to break at the, or turn in rather, at the start of the green. Clip that apex. Break about the midway point here down into first. Don't miss your apex again like I did. <laughs> a lot of apexes missed. Uh, break it again about halfway. Curving it back in. Trying to kind of backside that corner straight out your line on exit. And uh, again, try not to miss your apexes. Like Greddy was doing that entire lap. But look at that lead. I've got 18, 19 seconds heading down the straight. Cross the finish line. Take home the victory just like for stopping in Miami, coming from way, way back, putting that Red Bull racing car at the top of the podium. So, eat your heart out for stopping. I came back from P20, baby. All you did was P9. That, that shores it up. I am the greatest of all time in my mind when I sleep at night. That's, that's a fact. <laughs> so there it is, a 2104 at the victory. I remember last time I ran the 2101 against Mikhail. Didn't get the victory. Win this one by 19 seconds. So, that's how you do it. Make sure Mikhail isn't in the top three. Soft, one stopper. Put the tune on. SF23. Let it eat. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope this gets you that victory you're looking for. But to hit the like and subscribe, come back, check out some more of the action. For myself, go Gretty. Y'all have a great evening.